Okay, good afternoon. Before I start, I want to make sure. Uh, <coughs> okay, this is my real name, okay? So <laughs> <laughs> that's my real name. Uh, I think everybody here know uh, the name of my four brothers. <laughs> Yeah, I have to lead the third man, fourth man, and fifth man. <laughs> so that the point. So ah uh, yes, uh, we are from Intel. Uh, is everybody here know about Intel? Or doesn't know about Intel? <laughs> what is Intel? Intel focus on processor, right? Everybody know like that. Intel is processor. Intel processor. Intel processor. No. Intel is focus on technology. Processor is one of our product. So I'm here from uh, we call it the developer relation division from software and services group. I'm part of uh, Intel software and services group Asia Pacific in Japan, but my coverage area is for Southeast Asia. My base in Jakarta. So uh, what my objective? In my division is to help local creative economy like the makers, the developers, mobile apps, Windows apps, everything. Let's go and go together. That's our objective. So let's do something, collaborate with us, and create something wonderful. It's our objective. So last year. We create a competition. It's called Wearable Intel Wearables Challenge. Uh, we invite many makers from all around the world to join our competition. And I don't know who's the top, the top prize money, but here is the winner. <coughs> they create so many things to make uh, our life more better and just want to push it so here is the first winner of the our competition Hard 
hardware which is compatible with Arduino and also compatible with Galileo. So you will need to learn more to learn Galileo. Uh, after this uh, sessions, we will have uh, Galileo sessions <coughs> with uh, one of the innovators from Intel uh, to talk about Galileo and Edison. The second is we have uh, Intel Edition. Intel Edition, is, we call it a computer. It's not a board. Galileo focused for uh, hobbies, research, and everything. But Galileo, we are focusing to uh, who startup or makers, everything to want to create a new, a wonderful product. So Nixi create using edition. They put this edition uh, in the drone and using a recent camera so we, the, uh, the drone can follow you to anywhere okay it includes one gigabyte by VDS storage including also Wi-Fi and Bluetooth yes if you want to see how size this edition is like this so it won't look like something or oh, you have our edition okay maybe it's after this session Sophians from Intel Enterprises in workshop will show you how to use this and how to create something using uh, edition and the last product is called the turtle that has yes. Edison. Uh, it's a product created by Edison. So as Diana connects Edison to the onesie, the onesie now becomes smart. Next thing we did was we took our coffee cup, because every new parent has a coffee cup, you expect those sleepless nights, and we made it smart. And so as Diana connected Edison to the onesie, you saw the coffee cups come away, because they sense that the ecosystem was awake now. And they're showing me right now the breathing rate and the temperature of the Okay. So, one product created by Edison. So you can know about the temperatures, uh, emotion of the baby from the Edison to the car, okay? And just announced last year, we will uh, produce ones and we did both for the makers of Kali. The science like uh, your specials. So it's good to use for a uh, variable. And the last thing I want to introduce to you about our technology is our uh, interface. I have anybody here here about RealSense. RealSense is a technology to put human senses to computing device. So the device can hear, can see, can talk to you, and know how you feel, like uh, emotions, you feel bad, you feel good, or something. So, we call it a uh, Intel Real-Sense Technology. It means, it's, in real Technology, we have three words. Natural, Intuitive, and Inertial. Natural. Natural is how to communicate between human and device. Like communication, between interaction between human and humans. Everybody said touch. Right now, we communicate with our device with us, right? In concept is not natural. Why? Because we don't need to touch my friend here. So for example, I need to talk with Sophia. Hello Sophia. I need to touch her. I need to right? Hello Sophia, how are you? Good. Good. Where are you going now? So. <laughs> it's natural? It's natural? No. So we can talk to device like uh, we talk to humans. It's not too long. For example, 
we can use our fingers. So here, yeah, please. So you go to the right, right? I want to ask Sophia to go. So this is a natural interaction between human and human. So we will put it to a device. So you can create, draw everything on your embedded uh, solutions. And interact with humans with naturals. Very, very naturals. Maybe we call it naturals. And the second one is intuitive. Intuitive, it means there is no manual books. What is for example, Sophia, please take me uh, a bottle of water, please. So, I got a bottle of water from Sophia, right? So, I don't need to Google searching in the internet how to ask Sophia to take me a bottle of water, right? I don't need manual book to ask Sophia to take me a bottle of water. So, I can talk with him. Directly. So what we can push to the device also intuitive too. So we can talk with our solutions, IoT solutions, with intuitive interactions, without any manual books game. Okay? Immersive, there is no barrier between uh, the remote and the, the what is it? Uh, the regular and the, the, the barrier between real world and virtual. Uh, uh, yes, the, the, the new barrier. We have the same. Okay, so maybe I can show you the feature of your sense and tracking. We have, we can do with gestures, yes, and face. Identification, everything, speech, and everything. The most important is here 3D object scanning. I talk with many makeup here today from the morning. So many makeup create 3D, 3D printing solution, right? The problem is the 3D printing, how to create the object. If I want to, to print this one, I need uh, knowledge to create this one in Photoshop or another uh, 3D design in next tool, right? So with this technology, you just put it here and then scan it. In two minutes, you will get 3D image in your computer like this. So now we have a new 3D system. Maybe for more Let's put two drones down, and we'll use this drone here, and we're going to play a little drone ping pong, simply moving the drone between us. You see the drone continues to try and stay in one position, but I think it's going to be obvious, avoiding us at all times. in the drone. So you can drive the drone with your body. Okay. And then maybe here is the video to more the Okay, we have worked with so many companies. 
Dia ya, fokus menu menu ini, data, and fortune to get to where all device, and also so many product booking with uh, many partners with Intel. So how about the developer program? We have a new landing page for software that is developed. There is so many tools, video, and online everything there. So if you want to learn something from our technology, you can go here. And we also have a Intel IoT also. And many documentations about our technology there. So if you want to learn to create something wonderful, go this page. And we have tools, uh, this is on Java, HTML5. Intel SDK for AD, so you can create something with these tools. The most important is, how about the manners? Our CEO said that without collaboration with makers, nothing from us. Okay? In Indonesia, in progress right now, we donation 20 billion euro to Macedonia uh, to help them to reach uh, local makers to create something with our products. So it's a donation. So I can work with, uh, and also I can work with uh, so many makers in Southeast Asia if you're interested, join us, collaborate with us. And what I need is just send me your activity or your prototype, everything, portfolio, and need help from Intel. Just come to me. Send me an email, not proposal, just send me an email. Let do something more. More about the how to grow uh, local makers in Thailand. So we have been done in Macedonia. I think in Macedonia I already know what I do in Indonesia. So let do something uh, with uh, let go do it in your country with the towns. Okay. So I have one program. It's called Innovator Programs. I I want to ask Sophia to stand up, please. This is the first. So this Asia Intel Innovators, IoT Intel, Intel Innovators. Okay, so Sofian from Vector Indonesia. So Sofian will help me to share. He will get so many benefit. He go to Ross Indonesia with Intel money, right? Sofian, <laughs> to share uh, everything, his company, his startup, and also to share about uh, how to create something with uh, how to get something in IoT, right, Sophia? Okay, thank you, Sophia. And Sophia will help IoT workshop today, Intel IoT workshop today in the event. So, I invite, if you're interested, join me, become uh, Intel Innovators. Send an email, I will give you the details. So, it's open to everyone here not only from Indonesia, but also from Asia. So, before I close the event, maybe I have one colleague here from Singapore want to talk about what he do in IT program in this Asia. So, Mr. Eric, please. Uh, hi, everyone. It's always difficult to be second to first one. So, Anyway, here, here you guys. Just like to give you guys a quick overview of uh, what it is that we're doing here in Singapore. Um, you know, Intel traditionally has been um, in an outreach program that's targeted at large companies. So we've got great technology. Uh, you go look under the hood under Lenovo, Redell, uh, RIP is there. Uh, the challenge that we're facing with the kind of new models, uh, about three years ago, our um, CEO decided to focus on the community. So the objective is to kind of get that message out in Singapore and start getting a little bit of traction. Get people using that technology, companies using that technology, specifically for the startup and startups. So what I'd like to do is give you guys a little bit of an overview of what it is that we do. Um, so I'm going to take about three or four minutes. Um, but one of the things that I always get asked 
can you tell how bad is my job? Um, so I actually have two jobs. Um, my daytime job is actually I'm involved in the next generation standards and technology group. So we look at what's happening in two and three years with respect to IoT and LT technologies. But the part that's going to be of interest to you guys is um, I'm actually responsible for the ecosystem initiatives here in, in Singapore. So targeting uh, educational institutions and startup companies. Um, a little bit of uh, background about myself. So I do have some startup experience. I, I did two startups in 1999. I exited in 1999 and 2006. I've got a little bit of uh, uh, experience outside of the tech. So Amazon, HP, and SAP. And um, one of my, one of my uh, claims to fame is I think I'm probably one of the oldest uh, makers in Singapore. So just, just out of interest, can anybody identify any of these boards on the right? Yeah, that's a pineapple actually, it's not the original apple too. But starting, starting on, the, on the right, this is the first board that I actually built. It's called the Ohio Scientific Super Board, which I put together at the age of 15. And this is basically a kit. You see that solar stuff, you bring up the bios yourself. So if we talk about the maker community and what just happened in the last three to four years, it's been around for some time. So starting for the OSI, the BBC Micro, the pineapple, and the Comfort Pet. And this is all the stuff that I can grow up with. But I want to quickly zoom in on, on what uh, key message of you know, this talk is. And specifically, what I want to focus on and share with you guys is what is a single startup model? And so I've kind of broken it down into the engineering side into six basic steps I'd like to share with you. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the case studies and the successes that we've had, uh, specifically with the Intel Edison program here in Singapore. And some of the ideas to uh, share with you on what um, building a viable ecosystem needs. I think this is the related to our larger structure. So the first thing is in, in any kind of environment, and I kind of cast this out for people who are starting out maker spaces or doing startups in, in Singapore is to kind of understand what is the big picture. And I think this is quite interesting. If you look at what's happening here in Singapore, um, there's definitely a dearth of, of startup funding and CBC funding in Singapore. So the government identified this way back in 2011. And they modeled the whole Singapore startup ecosystem on something called the Israeli Yosma program. So the Yosma program is a fund that was started up in 1994 by a private Israeli fund. And the focus there was to, to, to get innovation started with the government funding, catalyze the government funding, but quickly validate it with third party investors. So if you look around the Singapore ecosystem, you can see the Yosma program in action right now. And the figures speak for themselves. If you look at 2011, the venture funding in Singapore was kind of basically 27 billion. Um, 2013, it grew to 2 billion. And to set the context a little bit, if you look at the, the North American context, the overall venture funding is about 50 billion. So Singapore's catching up. It is, like everything in Singapore, driven by the, by the government. I don't want to go into the details here, but if you guys would like to get more information about how the funding is actually structured, um, it's been this is the clearest place. So come ahead and we update on some more details on this. We've actually supported about 22 startups in Singapore. Uh, this runs the gamut from a company called Tiwa, that's used to retail Edison to build a haptic feedback for autistic children. Uh, a company called Symphony that's building a stroke rehabilitation system for uh, for patients based on retail Edison, which tracks myometric signals in the arm, correlates that with the brainwave data. Um, we've got companies like uh, Silverline that's actually used in the Intel Galileo to build a, a patient monitoring system for senior citizens. I keep going on, but I just want to just get to the, the key point. We've got a number of case studies, and sorry, I'm out of time. Um, but this is really the activity that, that Intel is embarking on to kind of build a sustainable uh, ecosystem here. I think this model applies across the Southeast Asia space. So uh, pretty soon, uh, as HL Singapore is going to be announcing three open innovation labs. This is going to be open to um, schools as well as startups. Um, they'll be setting up in NT, in uh, NYP. And basically, we're going to be equipping those labs with all of our devices. Not only Intel Galileo's um, and Edison's, but a fairly complex attributes processes and FPGAs. And there'll be training sessions that you yeah, can guys come through with. Uh, the other key element is startups. Uh, so we are supporting startups. Uh, Intel doesn't provide funding, uh, but through Spring Singapore, 
If you guys have a good idea, uh, let me know. If it meets the spring criteria, there's actually funding available to get to the ideas started up. Um, so that's it. I just want to quickly wrap up that we have much space, uh, if there's very much time. But basically, then just to summarize, this six-step process, get the big picture, identify stakeholders, identify the candidates, and build a community. Um, and also just a message for the Naked Space guys out there, you guys running Naked Spaces. Make sure it fits the ecosystem, make sure the business models that you're proposing actually make sense and engage. And this is my email if you'd like to uh, chat with you. Uh, please do. Thank you. Thank you.